California startup Aptera is quite the unique company. Its three-wheeled solar electric vehicle is unlike anything else on the road today. Built from super strong composite materials with a form factor that's designed to slice through the air as efficiently as an aeroplane, Aptera was reborn back in 2019 after its initial founders, Steve Fambro and Chris Anthony, recaptured all the IP that had been sold off after the original Aptera under then CEO Paul Wilbur, was declared bankrupt in 2011. And in the two years since it came back from the dead, stronger and better prepared for the EV marketplace, Aptera has made some significant progress towards production, executing multiple successful funding rounds and gaining significant support from a large number of its original fans. This week, the company made several major announcements indicating that Despite pushbacks of its original plans to already have the Aptera in production, the company is readying itself to enter limited volume series production by the end of this year, with production volumes ramping up next. So today, we're going to remind you a little of Aptera's story thus far, detail the good news from its San Diego headquarters this week, and examine what's next. But first, since the name Aptera means wingless flight in Greek, we think it's time for you to help us take flight and soar to new heights. How do you do that? By clicking on the subscribe button beneath this video and making sure you've also hit the notification bell. And it wouldn't also hurt to check your preferences for the channel either, as sometimes YouTube likes to be a little pedantic about which notification it sends you and when it sends them. And if you'd like to help us in other ways, stick around until the end and I'll tell you how. Before we get into this week's news from Aptera, let's get a quick recap of where the company was and now is. Because we're often asked to explain Aptera's history in the comments section, we thought it would be good to do so. And if you already know the company's history, don't be afraid to skip to the next chapter marker. Founded in 2005, the first vehicle, the MK0 Technology Demonstration Vehicle, was fitted with a diesel-electric hybrid drivetrain and used to solicit investor interest in Aptera. It was followed in 2007 with the Aptera Type 1, a vehicle that was redesigned by Jason Hill, an industry veteran who had previously worked on the Smart for Two and Porsche Carrera GT. Again, this vehicle, with both electric and hybrid variant demonstrators, was used to gain investor interest. In 2008, the company's original co-founders brought in industry experts to help grow the company, including Paul Wilbur, who assumed the role of company CEO as Steve Fambro stepped down to become CTO. This, I should remind you, is an in of itself unusual in the startup world. Company founders rarely remain CEOs. After Wilbur joined, Aptera's two series variants, the 2E and 2H, were announced. They were the vehicles Aptera planned to bring to series production, with the electric version offering a claimed 200 watt-hours per mile, 125 watt-hours per kilometre when it came to efficiency, and a full battery charge of 100 miles, or 160 kilometres. But after the US government denied Aptera funding under the Advanced Technology Vehicles Manufacturing Loan Programme, the very same programme which helped Tesla and many other automakers bring cleaner, greener vehicles to market, the original company started to suffer. It had been denied funding not because of a financial position or indeed a lack of good technology. Instead, it was denied because language in the original program's acceptance criteria limited applications to four-wheeled vehicles, not three-wheeled ones. What followed wasn't the best of times for the original company. Many employees were laid off during 2009, and while Aptera had lobbied to change the ATVM wording and succeeded, it was then turned down for funding. Both co-founders left the company, and while Aptera continued until its bankruptcy in late 2011, it was a shell of its original idea. Assets and IP were sold off to a Chinese automaker who had a plan to make Apteras in China, but never actually came to pass. In the time since, Fambro and Anthony have worked hard to reacquire the original IP from Aptera, and in 2019, the company was reborn with a crowdfunding campaign to bring a newer, smarter, reinvigorated Aptera back to life. 
To their credit, neither Fambro nor Antony dwell on the past or indeed what happened to Aptera after Wilbur joined. And what's telling is a large number of people who reserved the original Aptera have returned to the company today as customers, and many of the original team from the early days of Aptera have come back to work at the firm after it was reborn. Today's Aptera is only available as an electric vehicle and adds solar panels, two or three 50 kilowatt in-wheel hub motors, depending on the variant you opt for, and battery packs ranging in size from 25 kilowatt hours to 100 kilowatt hours. Aptera claims up to 1,000 miles of range per charge, 1,600 kilometers for the range topping model with two wheel, not three wheel drive, because the three wheel drive is slightly less efficient. But anyway, this all brings us back to this week's news. As I'm sure you know, we've been down to Aptera a few times since the reborn company was announced. And disclaimer, I am a personal reservation holder. There are links in the video description covering why I made that decision and also detailing our two ride alongs thus far. And while Aptera has missed its originally extremely optimistic production date of mid-2021 for early Aptera vehicles, the company seems eager to hit Q4 production later this year. Last time we were there, Aptera said it had pretty much finished its beta prototype work and was full steam ahead with gamma prototype testing. This week, it announced that it had secured significant supply contracts with the parts companies it needs to bring that vehicle to series production, as well as detailed the number of reservations it now has on its books. With the majority of staff now moved into the new production facility where Aptera will be made, the company's latest update video states that supply contracts have been inked with Slovenia company Alafe for the in-wheel motors and distributed drive technology that lies at the heart of the two or three wheel drive systems being offered in the Aptera solar electric vehicle. While in-wheel motors have traditionally been eschewed by many in the industry, Alafe's partnership with Aptera makes sense here because the Aptera vehicle design is so incredibly lightweight and aerodynamic compared to a traditional car. This means that the motors required to push Aptera along are far smaller and thus much lighter than they would be for a regular car, reducing the mass of the motors and eliminating some of the concerns that come from in-wheel motor design, like unsprung mass. That's very different to the challenges facing another company using in-wheel motors, the Lordstown Endurance. It also uses Alafe in-wheel motors, but those motors are more than double the power output and presumably weigh a whole lot more in a truck that is far heavier than the claimed 1,800 to 2,200 pound curb weight given for Aptera. By the way, that's 816 to 998 kilograms, which, if you're interested, is about the same kind of ballpark figure as the original Volkswagen Golf. Getting power to the motors requires cables, and Aptera has also signed an agreement with Yazaki for the electric cabling and power connectors used to get power around the vehicle, both in terms of high voltage circuits like battery connectors and charging inlets through to low voltage control circuitry. Yazaki is a well known tier one parts supplier that supplies a multitude of automakers, including Toyota, Honda, General Motors, Ford, Stellantis, Subaru, Nissan and Tesla, to name just a few. It's also important to note that Yazaki has been putting significant amounts of effort of late into making it easier for startups to work with it on new vehicle designs and products. And I'd guess that that has been super important here to help Aptera. Finally, at least in terms of news of supply contracts, Aptera has reached an agreement with Red Viking to purchase the AGVs it wants to use in its new production facility. What's an AGV, I hear you say? An AGV is an automated guided vehicle, aka those little flat carts that move vehicles around a production facility while singing a happy little tune. These days, automakers, especially startups, are using AGVs as it means much more flexibility on the production line and far less downtime when things need to be modified to add new stations or models than a traditional overhead fixed production line. Ford uses AGVs in its F-150 Lightning production line, as does Tesla in some of its production facilities. 
Signing a contract for AGVs signals that the company is closing in on being ready to start preparing the facility for series production, which, again, is great news. And while I will admit there is a massive gulf of distance between readying the production line for the start of pre-production validation and testing and actually seeing series production vehicles coming off the line and into customers' hands, it is worth noting that Aptera is far more transparent than most automakers. It's let people tour the facility, see, ride, and yes, even drive its prototypes. And frankly, that's more than many companies with far bigger budgets and goals have ever offered. And I think that that grassroots vibe at Aptera, which in some ways is very similar to the vibe for another three-wheeled company, Arkimoto, has helped Aptera achieve what it says is now more than 22,000 reservations for its vehicle. It says that represents more than $800 million of potential revenue, but look, I would be remiss not to note at this point that pre-reservations are most certainly not confirmed orders nor are $100 deposits on a place in line. Look, if there's one thing that the number of people who put down money on the Ford F-150 Lightning, the Rivian R1T and Tesla Cybertruck at the same time have taught us, it's that customers will quite happily part with refundable deposits of a few hundred, but they'll also quite happily switch to a different vehicle or product if one comes along that better suits their needs than the vehicle they have a deposit on. What's different though for Aptera and what actually works in its favor is the fact that frankly, there's no other vehicle like it anywhere else in the marketplace. Sure, there are electric three wheelers and yes, there are efficient solar electric vehicles, but there's not a single vehicle that rivals the Aptera in the marketplace right now in terms of efficiency and comfort and utility. And that means it's more likely that reservation holders will become customers. Aptera just has to keep its end of the bargain, which means reaching production in a timely fashion with no further delays and deliver on what, frankly, are still quite some lofty promises, especially when it comes to range per charge. Only time will tell if it manages to do so, but I think plenty of what people are rooting for seems to be a paradigm shift in efficiency in a world where vehicles are becoming larger and less efficient and Aptera is doing the complete opposite. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you really liked today's video, why not leave us a super thanks? It's easy to do and everything you send us goes towards helping make great content on this very channel. If you want a generalized news roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter vehicles, do check out our news roundup show every weekend. And don't forget, we produce videos every single day on this network for you to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features through to tutorials, unboxings, and reviews. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ring to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Oh, and don't forget to fill out our annual viewer survey. It'll take about 20 minutes, but it really does help us better represent our audience to sponsors and partners of the channel, as well as make sure that we make content that better meets your needs. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month supporters, Chris Maxwell, Predo Mura Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tazlet in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Gillinger and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our top tier supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, Redar, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you would like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or show us your support by sending us money through Ko-fi or by buying one of our cool t-shirts from our swag store. Our new pride designs 
with the Pride wind turbines are now in stock. And if you are unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really does make a difference to our overall bottom line. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. Bye.